Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm not going to talk about CDs at all. This is just going to be a short little tale that I want to pass on to you. Uh, you know, is it a cautionary tale? Nah. Is it a tale of woe is me? Not even close. It's just a little story because uh, I stumbled across my voiceover demo and I'm going to play that for you in just a few moments. But I want to tell you sort of how this all started. Like I said, this isn't, I don't feel bad about this at all. It is what it is. Life is what, it, you know, life throws you curveballs. Either you knock it out of the park or it hits you in the forehead and you're unconscious for weeks. Uh, but with this story, you know, it goes back, you know, people always told me, oh, you should be a DJ. So I went uh, to junior college and I was in telecommunications and I was studying to be a DJ and, and I got married shortly after that. So I dropped out of junior college and, and pursued my career in the uh, uh, entertainment wholesale uh, industry. And this is, gosh, late 80s. Yeah, late 80s. And uh, so, you know, a few years after that, uh, I decided, uh, you know, I'd go uh, do a volunteer DJ thing at KUCI, uh, which I did for probably maybe six months to a year. Of course, it was Sunday mornings at three o'clock, which is not an opportune time, but it was great because it got practice in. And then after that, uh, I'd say another five, six years after that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to uh, do voiceovers or actually that's what I wanted to do. So, uh, you know, I focused on making a demo. And I put together this demo. I wrote out the copy, which is the things that I say. And then I went to my brother and I said, hey, can I come over and you put together some music and I do my voiceovers. We edit it together, splice it together and create a voiceover demo. And he was, yeah, let's do it. Let's, you know, so I went ahead and I did it. And I love the way it turned out. But unfortunately, I didn't know what to do next. I had the demo. What do I do? I came up with some kind of resume, you know, talking about my past DJ experience and stuff like that. So uh, I went ahead and put it in a bunch of envelopes and mailed them out. There was this one company, and I think it was Santa Ana, California, you know, because I was based in Orange County. And um, I had called them and I said, uh, hey, you know, I would like representation because you need an agent to get a voiceover gig. So I was sending these out to agents, you know, these envelopes. Uh, I sorry I didn't clarify that before, and the uh, uh, I, I called the person in Santa Ana. I said, "Do you think I can send you uh, an envelope? Uh, you know, with my demo, you can give it a listen and see if it's you know something you're interested." In. And they said, "No, we don't take unsolicited demos." And I thought, "Oh crap!" Because like I had sent them the package the day before, and I thought, "Oh crap, they don't take unsolicited demos." Uh, and I was royally bummed, and I thought, "Well." Nothing's going to come out of it. They're just not going to listen to it. They're going to throw it in a bin, and that's it. Then the next day, I got a call from them, and they said, hey, we got this uh, package from you. Uh, we didn't ask for it, but I decided to listen to it, and I love it. Can you come in, and we'll talk about representing you? And I was over the moon. I thought, oh, my gosh. You know, all these other people that I sent it to, they probably just threw it away because it was unsolicited, of course. And, uh, you know, this agent, and they were really excited, and they said, you know, uh, uh, when can you start going on auditions? And I said, whenever. So within a week, they called me. They said, we, we you know, we've got some guy. We need uh, you to do something over the phone with him because, uh, you know, they're they're trying to scramble for a last minute replacement. They don't have time to bring anybody in. Can you talk to him? I said, yeah. So they faxed me over a copy and I read that over the phone. They said, okay, yeah, you got the job. So the next day I went down and I uh, did my first uh, commercial. It was an IHOP commercial. And of course, I didn't know the ropes. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was uncomfortable about it. You know, I'm comfortable talking to you guys on this microphone. Uh, you know, I feel, you know, generally uh, uh, safe. But with this, is a room full of professionals. You know, they're paying money to have you come and do this. And I was not giving exactly what they wanted. But then I was listening to direction, listening to instructions. And I did what they wanted. And they said, perfect. Okay, thank you. And that was it. I was there for maybe a half hour. And that paid very well for that half hour's worth of work. And I thought, oh, I could totally get into this. Absolutely. So uh, my agent was really happy that I got the very first audition that I ever got and I got the gig and there I was on an IHOP radio commercial. And of course I never heard the commercial. I don't even know if they used it, but at least I got paid. 
then each week I would go uh, drive up to LA and go on at least one audition a week. And, but I wasn't nailing those, but I was learning, you know, I was learning what these people are looking for. You know, I was getting to feel more comfortable in, in sort of, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that does impersonations or uh, planned, you know, voices and things like this. I do that stuff, but it's just more jokes and things like that. So actually doing it in front of people that I don't know is, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to be doing that. So essentially, I wasn't getting uh, uh, any more auditions, but I was warming up to it. And, and I was getting close. And there were a couple of people that wanted me to come back again. Uh, and But then I was working. You know, I'd have to take time off of my day job and then, uh, you know, drive to L.A. So take, you know, a two-hour chunk of time uh, at least uh, out of my workday, come back and then work a little bit later. You know, things like that. But it, I was really starting to feel comfortable about it. But then my company said, hey, look, we're, you know, we want to move you to, to a new position. So you have to make a choice here. Either you are going to... Uh, you know, we're going to give you a raise and we're going to um, make you full time in this position. Or you can stay in the position you are. We won't give you a raise uh, and you can still go out and do your auditions. Uh, and I started thinking, I mean, the, at that point, I, I, I don't know if my wife was working at the time. At this point, I was, I was married to my second wife. And I don't remember if she was working at that time, but we, were, we really needed the money. Uh, you know, in order to survive, in order to pay rent, in order to buy groceries, in order to live and not feel like, like, oh my gosh, you know, we don't, we don't have enough for this and we don't have enough for that. So I had to give up my voiceover career and do the responsible thing and take on a, a, a you know, a full-time job or a full-time position within this company for more money. And is that a decision that I regret? I don't know. But it is what it is. You know, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, my gosh, you know, if I had stuck with it, I could be making a lot of money and I could be doing cartoons and voiceovers and all this kind of fun stuff. But it may not have happened at all, you know. And and so I don't really worry about the fact that I gave up a voiceover career. I mean, would I love to do a voiceover career? Would I love to make that kind of money now uh, for doing voiceovers for, you know, very little bit of work? Uh, I I would love to do that and continue working my job now. Oh, that would be so amazing. I could pay off bills, do all that kind of stuff. But it's a decision that I made then, and uh, I that's something I can't sit here and and regret. But you know, it is what it is. Like I said, it's not. This is not to feel sorry for myself situation at all. If it was feeling sorry for myself, then you know you'd see a couple tears or something coming down, or I'd be you know trying to get sympathy. This is not getting sympathy. This is just telling you this thing because I kind of want to play my demo because my demo's only been heard by, you know, my agent and a couple friends and stuff like that. And I kind of like it. My brother did a great job in putting the music together. I wrote the copy. Uh, he edited it. And I think maybe I made one or two edits afterwards uh, just to sort of tighten it up a little bit. Uh, but it's about like two or three minutes. Um, I don't remember. I have the file sitting here in my computer. I'm going to play it for you right now. I hope that you enjoy this. Uh, and you know, heck, if you know somebody looking for somebody for some voiceover work for some a little part time job, hey, I got no problem with that. But no, I really don't expect it. I just think it's a fun thing. Uh, and I, I sort of chuckle at this because I hadn't heard it in years, to be perfectly honest. So I'm going to go ahead and say right now what I normally say when I play my medleys on my videos. Sit back, relax, take a listen, and I will see you on the other side of my voiceover demo. Still haven't test driven a Saturn LS? And I bet you've never kissed a real girl before, have you? Well, it's time to make up for your past mistakes and test drive a new Saturn LS. Live life, love life, LS from Saturn. Dot com this, dot com that, <laughs> dot com on. From music and movies to Lamborghinis, it's all here. So buy it now at buyitnow.com. New extra zesty nacho cheese Doritos. Can I do that one again?
new extra zesty nacho cheese Doritos. There's a whole lot of fun in every bag. Just one more time, nacho, give me the bag. Log on to PCFlowers.com. Stimulate her with the beautiful scent of real fresh flowers, and she may finally see your sensitive side. PCFlowers.com, the sensible gift for the holidays. Social anxiety disorder affects over 100 million Americans. But now, you can regain control of your life. Paxil is the only prescribed medication proven effective and approved by the FDA for the treatment of social anxiety disorder. I even entered in some names that I thought I made up, and, well, well, they had those too. So, the lesson I learned... CDNow.com is where I'm doing my music shopping from now on. CDNow.com, where even the hardcore music fan can find what they're looking for. Is it in her eyes? Is it in her kiss? Is it the gentle breeze that tickles the back of your neck? Is it the words she whispers in your ear? Or is it the car? The all-new Saturn LS. Words cannot describe the comfort. You have to feel to believe. Saturn LS. Love at first drive. Anyway, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed that voiceover demo. That was fun just to play it. Uh, you know, it's not an ego stroke. It's not a, oh, woe was me. Like I said, it's just a bit of fun. I hope you found it entertaining. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, to ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, remember me. I'm Steve Schnee, the CD junkie and failed voiceover actor. Uh.